I'm going to show you three ways which you can scrape data, which will allow you to collect data from virtually any website on the internet and then use that information within any AI process, an agent, a bot, whatever. This makes the AI tools that you can build much more powerful and they can really help make your business more profitable and more efficient. You can build tools that monitor your competitors, their ads, their products, their prices, their email campaigns. You could create a tool that automatically finds your ideal leads and reaches out to them. You could build a tool that looks for gaps in the market in hot areas. The sky is really the limit here. I'm not a scraping expert, but you don't need to be in order to scrape most websites. And I'm gonna show you three ways to do that today. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we are within NA10 and we can see our three methods here. Let's start with our first one. Oop. So our first one is using a very simple HTTP GET request. We are then uh, using a code block and we are then using AI to interpret the data which we're scraping. So what we're doing in this situation is we're going to a website, um, this website here, let me close this for a second, we'll come back to this later. Um, and we're gonna try and get the price of this product. In another video, I showed you how you could build an automation to go through and let's say this website was your competitor, you can check all of the prices every day of all their products in case they're running promotions like they're running here, um, and you can use that within your marketing. So let's copy the URL, and we're gonna come over to NA10. Let's open up our HTTP request. How this works is essentially whenever you're interacting with a web browser, you are running a GET request of whichever URL you're trying to access. So let's paste in that URL here. And what we are doing is rather than displaying this like you would see in Google Chrome, we're gonna get back the code. So if I go back over here and if we go to inspect, the code that you see on the right hand side is the code that we are going to return uh, when we scrape this web page. In fact, let's go back to NA10 and do that. So let's test this step. And we don't need to set up anything else. We're just gonna make sure the method is get, paste in our URL, test that step, give it a second or two. And we can see we get back all of that data and that's exactly the same data that you can see within here. Now, one thing you'll notice is that this is a lot of information. And if we're gonna use this within a AI process, this is gonna use a lot of tokens uh, passing this into an AI model. So one thing that we're gonna to want to do next is take this data and we're gonna to want to clean it up. So if we click into this node here, we can see that we have a very basic JavaScript script, which is going to take that HTML that we generated in the last step, and it's gonna clean it up. And essentially what we're doing here is removing any scripts, any styles, any, uh, as it says here, unnecessary tags um, that are within that information, within that HTML that we don't need in order to get back information about the page. And if we run this, we can see that we're gonna pass in, uh, this is just a short version, but that's that massive long bit of HTML that we got from the web page. We're gonna click test step. And if I shrink this down so we can see what's happening on the outside, we can see we get a much, much, much smaller uh, condensed version of this page, but it still contains all the really important information. This means that when we then pass this on to AI, we are uh, not spending thousands and thousands of tokens passing in a massive HTML file like this, where you can see we're going to be scrolling for hours, um, but we're passing in a much, much smaller bit of text, which is gonna be much more efficient, but still give us all the information. If you want this code here or any of the information shown in this video, you can download it and use it yourself, then head over to my Applied AI Club. The link is in the description. You can join for free and it's got all of the resources from all of my videos in it. So uh, that is the code that's running here, essentially stripping all of the scripts, styles, and anything else that we don't need and giving us just the useful information. We can then run a AI process, which is very simply gonna be using uh, GPT-4 and Mini, but you can use any uh, model that you want really. And we're asking it, tell me how much this product costs, use the information below, which will scrape from a website to determine this. And then we're simply passing in that information here, um, which is our much condensed information. So if we run this, what we're going to see is it's gonna come back, give it a second. And it's gonna say, uh, the cost of the Gymshark Waffle Shorts in Onyx Grey is currently £22.50, which reflects a 50% discount from the regular price of £45. And we could change this if we wanted to output it in a different format. And obviously we can then feed this data that we've collected into any sort of AI process that we want to. I've got a lot more videos showing uh, different AI processes you can pass this data into. However, this video is really just showing how you collect that data. So you can see here, the first and the most basic version is just running an HTTP GET request on a URL and getting that information. Now you will run into some limitations because this doesn't work on um, larger websites. Large websites will have protection in place because they don't like this a lot of the time. Um, and if you have things like authentication, so you need to log into an account, if you need to take some sort of action such as closing a pop-up or running a search, if you're on you know, a, a property website and you're searching for a certain property or a certain type of property or a certain area, you won't be able to do those things. So with this approach, you are gonna run into limitations, which brings us on to method number two. So method number two not only allows you to access uh, more websites as we're essentially using a proxy, um, but we are gonna be capturing a screenshot of a page and we're then gonna be passing that image, that screenshot into AI, into an AI model. And then we're gonna be asking the model, 
what is in this image and then extracting any information we want. So let me hook this up and let's have a look at how this is working. So first of all, I have a edit fields or set fields node here, and this is allowing me to just set which URL that I want to scrape. So what I'm going to scrape in this example is my school community. I started this about a week ago. We've got a couple of people in there at the moment, but I want to get back uh, how many people we do have in this and I want to scrape that and automate it. So copy the URL and I'm going to come across and I'm going to put this in the URL section and we can see here this is just going to pass the URL through to the next step it just allows us to set which URL we want to scrape. So then we are going to be using a tool called Screenshot Machine. Now let's go and have a look at Screenshot Machine. Now there are a lot of screenshot API tools out there. If you Google Screenshot API tool you'll find a lot. I quite like this one. It's got some free limits. I think it's uh, about 100 a month. And then the rates after that are pretty affordable. So here we are in the dashboard. I will blur some of this information um, because the customer API key is private. So if we come across to API Builder, we'll be able to build our own API endpoint, which we can query in order to turn a URL into a screenshot. So we can enter a load of different bits of information here in order to say what we want to do. We can obviously say which URL we want to scrape. So which URL we want to go to and take an image of uh, a device. So that'll say what screen size, the dimensions, the format. You could do more complicated things such as a delay. So this might be useful if um, to begin with, there's a pop-up which then disappears. We can also do things such as click a button. So we can say which button we want to click. So perhaps that closes a pop-up that appears. And you can see we've got a load of other uh, tools that we can use. I'm not going to go into this in much detail, but you can see here that we can play around with any of this information and that's going to change the information that we got on the right hand side. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to put in just a, a test uh, URL. I'm just going to say Google and that is just so we have the URL on the right hand side here. And then what I would do is just copy this and I would bring it across over to NA10 and I would simply leave this as a GET request and put this into the URL. And I'm not going to do this because I already have it within here. Uh, one thing you would need to do is replace the URL um, with the URL that we got from the previous field. So you can see we can just drag the use URL into this section here so that we are bringing the right URL. So I'm going to test this, give it a second. And there we can see we've got our data, which I can view. And there we go, that is my school page. So we can then take this image, which we have generated here, and we can go through and add in a, in this case, an open AI node, which is going to analyze an image. We're just using four and many for this. Our text input is going to be how many people are in this school group. And we are passing in um, a binary file because that is the file that we've got here. And that's going to be called data because that's what the file is being called. If we click test step, I'm going to wait a second or two whilst it sends off that binary file over to OpenAI and analyzes it. And then it's going to come back and say the school group applied AI club has 17 members, which as we can see, is correct. So there you can see this is our second method of using a screenshot in order to scrape data from a page. Now this has some benefits because firstly it will get around some access restriction depending on which uh, API tool you are using. It also allows us to collect more information than just the code that's on the page. So it will give you a lot of context in terms of where the buttons are in relation to each other. It will give you information such as the colors. You'll be able to pass this into AI and potentially in some cases get back more information because it's actually an image rather than just the code that you're passing in. So there are some examples where this is going to be more useful than even an advanced form of scraping just the HTML from a website. Of it, it does have some limitations. Uh, besides a few of those things that we saw, you can't really authenticate. Uh, you won't be able to access larger sites and you can't really take complex actions. You can press buttons here and there, but not really anything more complex. So let's move on to number three and let's have a look at the more complex way of doing it. So uh, let's break that connection and let's come down to number three, connect it up. Now what we're going to be doing here is either using a scraping service or a framework. So there are several different ways of doing this and essentially all of these uh, parts mentioned in step number three is that we are setting up our own scraper. Now that is either a scraper through a tool such as Appify or Bright Data or we're going to be using frameworks such as Playwright or Puppeteer in order to create our own uh, scraping scripts and then hosting those scraping scripts on, it's hard to say, on something like Google Cloud Platform. <laughs> and then we're going to be able to call it as an API. However, in this situation, we are going to uh, be using Appify. So Appify, um, if I come across to the homepage, um, is a tool that allows you to scrape lots and lots of things on the web. You can either create your own scraper or you can use scrapers which other people have created and you can pay a small amount for this. So you can see that what we're going to be using in this example is a YouTube scraper. And there are lots of examples. If I go to the Appify store, uh, you can sign up for Appify for free. You can see I'm actually on a trial account at the moment. You can search for anything such as uh, YouTube. 
and you'll see there is a whole load of different YouTube scrapers and they have different pricing models. They'll bring back information in different formats uh, and you can really find one that you like. So once you've come here and found one that you like, um, I found this one, which I quite like. You can see I'm gonna pay $1 per thousand videos that I get back. And if I click into this, I can specify a few things. So first of all, I'm gonna specify the URL for which I want to scrape. So this is the channel for which I want to get back information. You can see this is not a YouTube video scraper, but a channel scraper. Um, and we can change some information, you know, anything that we want to. Um, some more filtering down here. Uh, we can change some more things. Again, you can choose a different scraper if you want to have more options. There are scrapers which allow you to have more control over what you're scraping. But this is what we're gonna do for this video. Um, then what we're gonna do is connect to this via API. So up in the top right, we'll go API and we'll go endpoints. And we'll scroll down to run actor synchronously and get data set items. We will then copy this and we're going to come across to NA10 and we are going to open up this HTTP request node, which I've called Appify. And our method here is going to be get and the URL is simply going to be that URL which we have copied. I've already got it in here, so I won't uh, paste it again. However, we are going to need to put some body in. So we're going to select body, select JSON and uh, make it so you can just enter all the JSON yourself rather than having to enter each one of the properties. Then we come back over to Appify. Uh, here we go. And if we go to JSON rather than manual, we will essentially see the JSON for these settings. So you can change this to whatever you want. Let's change this to five and we'll see on the JSON that now reflects there as five. So what we'll do is just copy all of this JSON and bring it over into NA10 and paste it in here. And this is where we can uh, change which URL we want to scrape. We can add multiple URLs if we want to scrape multiple YouTube pages or whatever you want to use. And again, if you are uh, using another scraping tool, there are just millions and millions. Okay, not millions, but there are lots of tools that you can use within Appify. You can see Facebook ad library, TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram, Google Maps, uh, Apollo, loads of stuff. Uh, each one's gonna be slightly different how you set it up. So do have a look at um, how that's gonna work. If you have any questions, do come over to the uh, Applied AI Club and you can ask questions there. Uh, however, in this situation, let's come back over to this one here. And we've copied this JSON. We've then changed the settings here to be what we want to scrape. And we're gonna run this and test it. And it's gonna take a little bit of time. And the more items you're trying to scrape, the longer it's gonna take. And you can see here, we've got back a response um, with a load of information about my YouTube channel. So then what we're doing is we're using an aggregator. And this is simply um, taking certain fields. And because it's gonna return multiple bits of information about videos, it's gonna push it all into one field. And then here we just putting that into one string. And then we are passing this to an AI model, which will then take all of that information. In fact, let me run these steps so we can see it working. So that's gonna take all the information and put it into fields like this. And then the next one is gonna take this and create a single string from those fields. And then lastly, we're gonna take this string here and pass it into an AI model. And again, you can do whatever you want with uh, any sort of tool or building any sort of AI tool or AI chatbot, AI agent. And you can see here the result that we get from asking it to tell me a little bit about this channel is that we get this result here. And this approach using Appify or Bright Data, which is a, another version a little bit more complex than Appify, but essentially the same, will allow you to really do lots of different things when web scraping. You'll be able to uh, scrape virtually any site, You'll be able to fully specify what and which data is returned. You can deal with logins, authentications. You can deal with recaptures. So that little things where you've got to check that you're not a robot, the robot can complete that. You can navigate around a page, click buttons, enter searches, close pop-ups. And with tools like Bright Data and Appify, you can use scrapers that other people have built for really cheap. There we go. Those are the three methods from very simple to a little bit more complex. And web scraping does get a lot more complex, especially when building your own with frameworks such as Playwright, Puppeteer. You can really make it do whatever you want. And it's a whole rabbit hole you could spend years and years getting into. However, this will allow you to scrape data from 99% of websites and feed any sort of AI process that you want to with data collected from anywhere on the web. If you want to download this uh, automation with those three different methods here, you can go over to the school community, the Applied AI Club, and you can download it there. If you've liked this video, then please do give it a like, subscribe if you wanna see more videos, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.